You know, I have an old expression, talk is cheap. Actually, my motto is Proverbs 14, 23. All hard work leads to profit, mere talk leads to poverty. Talk is cheap. You can say this stuff all day long. Prove it to me. Okay, I will. First of all, Harper's Biochemistry, which is a medical textbook for doctors, was rewritten in 1996 over everything I just shared with you. You know, prior to 96, this was just unheard of. But chapter 56, the 24th edition published in 96, talks about glycoproteins and lists these eight sugars. The first graduating class of doctors that are aware of this technology is the class of 2002. And people ask me, why doesn't my doctor know about it? And I ask you, when did he graduate? You see, it's out there. You see, and, and they got four to seven years of internship for they were going to talk to a patient. So it's out there. And there's continuing medical education being done for current doctors right now. So it's just a matter of time before somebody tells your doctor or he's educated on this. Acta Anatomica, one of the most prestigious biochemistry journals in the world, was rewritten in 1998 over everything I just shared with you. The total journal was devoted to glycosciences and the study, study of complex carbohydrates. They did not know in 1998 when they published this journal that one nutraceutical research and development company worldwide had filed 96 patents on this technology. You see, something I want people to understand, this company does not have a product patent. They have a technology patent. They own the combinations of any two or more of these molecules, the stabilization process by which they're derived, which is the only way they'll work in the human body, the impact that they make on the human body, which is called cellular communication, and the outcome of any disease dysfunction that happens thereof is all under patent by this, this, this company. The New England Journal of Medicine, August 3rd of 2000. The title of this article is The Innate Immunity, Strategies of Innate and Adaptive Immune Recognition. There's that word again, recognition, identification. And what it says in this article right here is anytime you're missing one of these sugars and your body has not been able to produce it correctly, then you have what is called a glycosylation disorder or a communication breakdown. American Association for the Advancement of Science, Science Magazine, March 23rd, 2001, Volume 291. On the front cover is a cell. And all these funny little blue, blue things that you see here are these glycoproteins, these sugar molecules. And in this article, it's talking about deficiencies in our diet and with articles such as Saving Lives with Sugar. And right here, they actually published the eight essential sugars that are missing in our diet that are the deficiencies that are disallowing our immune systems from being able to function correctly. And, and this is all third party. This says nothing about this company. Changing cancer cells, surface sugars, can inhibit tumor growth. The key to halting cancer cells may lie in their sugary coats, scientists say, Carbohydrate molecules surround all cells and help them to identify and interact with one another. Now new research published today in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences indicates that altering some of the surface sugars associated with cancer cells can control tumor growth. You know anybody with cancer that might want to know that? That might be out here fighting with their, for their life with, with chemotherapy and radiation? MIT. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Technology Review, December 2001. You know, the title of the article is Glycomics. The subtitle is Sugars Could Be Biology's Next Sweet Spot. And this is talking about Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and infectious diseases like AIDS and herpes, to name a few. The University of California at San Diego, the University of Georgia, and I'm proud to say the University of Oklahoma has just opened up glycobiology centers. Everything these three universities are doing research on is all under patent by one nutraceutical research and development company as far as the clinical application is concerned. They own this technology. Now, I'll tell you something. Out of your tax money, out of that 22 cents of every dollar we send Uncle Sam, you know, the, the, a division of the National Institutes of Health just issued a $34 million grant to these three universities to study what I just got through sharing with you. So it's out there, and it's coming. It's just a matter of time. Um, there's a sh book out called Sugars That Heal by Dr. Eman, Emil Mendoa, third party researcher. What he talks about and how these sugars uh, help the body uh, in, in, in fighting illness and disease and cancers and things is just absolutely incredible. Scientific America magazine, July 2002, right there on the front cover, it says sweet medicine. That's our technology. That's what they're talking about right here. You see, it's all around us, guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's everywhere you turn. Um, Technology Review in February of 2003, which was put out by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, just listed glycobiology, which is this science, as one of the top ten technologies that will change the world. 
So on November the 14th of 2001, our chief medical officer was called before Congress in a closed-door session on biological warfare. And what they have found is this, that when these sugars are in your diet and your body is able to make this molecular chain correctly, that it assists the body in the ability to disallow virus and bacteria from being able to bind to the cell. Now let me put this in layman's terms. It's like having a rattlesnake in your house with its mouth taped up. It might be dangerous, but if it can't bite you, it can't hurt you. You might be a carrier, but you see, if it's unable to attach to the cell, then you don't get the infection from it. You realize what I'm saying here? Let me read you a short quote from that chief medical officer and what he wrote to Congress. And this is the final scribe of what he wrote. In instances of unusual epidemic or viral infectious agent exposure, glyconutrient supplementation has been found effective for enhancing general immune functions and defense. When supplied at higher levels than available in nature, sugars needed for cellular synthesis can take innate defense systems to a much higher level that are effective against infectious agents. I bet you want the people you love and care about to know about that, don't you? Now, see, the thing about these sugars are is that they are the gatekeepers on the cell. Nothing goes in and out of that cell without a sugar recognizing it. In other words, if you're missing one of these little sugars right here and your body is unable to recognize a certain nutrient, in example, glucose, and it will not allow glucose to come inside your cells, then you're a type 2 diabetic. That's what the problem is. Or how about the uh, osteoporosis and you're drinking milk and you're taking all the calcium supplements, you're doing everything that they say, but you still have osteoporosis and it's getting worse. Your bone density is going down. You see, it's because nothing gets in that cell without being recognized by a sugar. Now, you know, the American Longevity Institute has found that eight of the 10 biomarkers of aging, which bone density is one of them, will reverse on glyconutrient technology. Because when the sugar goes in the body and all of a sudden it recognizes the calcium, starts to allow it in there, then all of a sudden we see bone densities reverse and begin to rebuild. See, it all comes back to the body functioning normally. You see, I like what Sir William Osler says. It's not that the truth is not known. It's that some people reach a state of mind blindness where the truth is not seen, even though it's staring you right in the face. You see, there is an answer. These sugars have nothing to do with treating disease. These are not designed to treat, cure, mitigate, take the place of a doctor's care. They have nothing to do with that. They are strictly the raw food components that allow your body to function normally, your immune system. Your body is the healer. Your body has the ability that God gave it to cure itself of any dysfunction that's wrong with it if you give it what it's designed to have, and it begins to function normally. But this nutraceutical research company did research on five systems of the body. And with all due respect, you know, it doesn't matter where you, you know, address these, but you better be addressing all five of these systems. Number one system in the human body is called communication. That's what we just got through talking about. That is the boss, the biological operating system of the human body. That is these eight sugars. The second science in the human body is called defense and repair. It's also known as antioxidants. Now, we know about antioxidants. I mean, they've been talking to us for about 20, 25 years about antioxidants. There's curcuminoids, pycnogenols, grapeseed extracts, vi uh, chocolate, vitamin C. Those are antioxidants. It's what keeps the, the, the buildup and the damage to cells at a minimum. Well, there's only two types of antioxidants that will work inside the cell and will break the blood-brain barrier and work at the cell level in the brain. One of them is called glutathione. We can't duplicate that. God gave it to us. It's our body's natural antioxidant. The second form is called a phytochemical. And phytochemicals come from vine-ripened fruits and vegetables. They do not come from this green-harvested, store-bought stuff that you're buying at the grocery store. And don't fall for this organic nonsense because organic is good. It means no pesticides but it does not mean vine ripened. And only in a vine ripened state, because you see the, the phytochemicals are released from the seeds of the fruit to protect the seed when it ripens and turns fully mature on the vine. So if you pick it ri uh, green or before it fully ripens, you don't get